Hi everyone, this is Lima. Welcome to my channel where I'm sharing self-coaching and neuroscience-based techniques that have helped me and my clients to become authors of our own life. As we kick off the new year, many of us dive into goal setting and adopting new habits, but how often do we find ourselves falling short of these aspirations? In this video, I would like to share a common reason why we do so and what to do about it, how to minimize procrastination and how to avoid burnout. If this is something that resonates with you, please keep watching. I believe we all have commitments that we dropped at some point, whether it's an online course or a gym membership that is about to expire without even being activated. I've been there and I hate to remember how many projects I dropped simply because I did not realize how much time I have and how much time I will need to invest in this project. For example, course in Swedish, course in YouTube, actually starting YouTube, course in neurobiology. That's a short list only for 2022 of commitments that I failed to complete. When we embark on a new project, we tend to fall into optimism bias trap. Uh, when we tend to overestimate our capacity for change. So what's the optimism bias? Let me read this out for you. Optimism bias is a well-documented phenomenon in the field of cognitive psychology. It's characterized by the tendency to overestimate the likelihood of positive outcome and underestimate the likelihood of negative outcomes, which affects our planning and decision making. So for example, you want to make a big shift in your career and you found this amazing six month coding bootcamp that includes three hour lectures four times per week, plus homework, plus your full time job that you have right now, despite your two toddlers, four huskies that you need to look after, your Japanese language lessons and a French cookie club that you have every other Thursday and Sunday morning. When we are planning our bright new future, we tend to get so motivated and inspired that we forget to check in with reality. And reality is that if you look at your ordinary week that consists of 168 hours, you deduct the time when you are supposed to be asleep. You have around 100 hours weekly when being fully awake. If you deduct the time that is needed for your full-time job, for your kids doing groceries, cooking, having lunch, dinner, watching Netflix, commuting, and simply having hours when you just sit there on your sofa and stare into the wall in front of you, I truly believe we all need time like this in our lives. When you deduct all these existing commitments, you might realize that you have around 10 hours left per week. This is the time budget that is available for you to commit for your bootcamp or any other project that you have envisioned for yourself. 10 hours per week might seem like a trap it's roughly 10% of your wakefulness time. It might sound very little. However, it's too early for panic. Let me help you to see a bigger picture. If you take a look on this graph on the screen that I'm sharing somewhere, let's assume that the first gray block is 100% of your current life. And if you commit only for 10% of change monthly, by end of the year, you might see a surprising difference that you have made. And what's most importantly, this difference is possible without compromising the comfort of your current life, without sacrificing your friends, family, and simply your well-being. So the first secret ingredient to the approach that I'm offering you in this video is being very realistic about your time budget. Of course, life can get very unpredictable and something that we have planned in the beginning might be not relevant by end of the month, but understanding your time budget and time price for your new project is a very good start. The first step would be understanding how much time is available for you per week. 
put down in calendar all existing commitments that you already have. It's essential to be precise as possible. It's not only your full-time job that deserves a slot in calendar, it's everything that you do daily including your morning evening beauty routines your time with your kids time for cooking time for breaks taking a walk once everything that you need daily for your comfortable life is in calendar you will start to notice gaps in the schedules so this is the gold that we are looking for these are hours that potentially can be invested in the change that you have envisioned. This is your time budget for change. A side effect of this uh, task that I really like, once everything that you do daily is there in front of you in calendar, you might notice activities that uh, are stealing uh, precious hours, minutes daily from you. Here's a metaphor to emphasize the importance of this time budget. Committing for a new project without understanding your time budget is like going for shopping to a luxury department store without checking price tags. I mean, technically it's possible, but another secret ingredient of this approach is incorporation of a comfortable level of novelty change for our brain our brain naturally is seeking the state of homeostasis stability when nothing changes because this way our brain can save energy whenever you are committing for a big change our brain tends to resist and it leads to something that we call procrastination. Here's another metaphor, asking your brain to commit for a big change at once. It's like showing up uh, at your first date and start making wedding plans. Unless you don't want to see this person ever again, but that's a different story. My time budget for change is 15 hours per week. Whenever I want to enroll into a course, the first thing I would do, I would check how much hours per week I would need to invest. I, I, I would check not only the time that I will need to spend in lectures or workshops, but also time for homework. If a project re require more than 15 hours per week, I, I need to understand what is the opportunity cost, what are the things that I will need to sacrifice for this certain time period. With this simple approach to goal setting in past 12 months, I managed to get two coaching certifications. I was working as a group coach in three months a self-development program and I got probably in my best shape ever just because I committed for regular yoga classes. And all this was possible while having my full-time job at, in tech, having a decent social life, traveling and keeping my household neat and tidy. Well, relatively. Let's sum up. In order to increase likelihood of achieving your goals, the first thing first is do your time inventory. Second, understand what is your time budget per week that you can invest in your new project. Roughly, it is 10% of our wakefulness time, which is on average 10 hours per week. Thirdly, give a time price tag to a project to which you want to commit and finally be mindful about the opportunity cost. To wrap this up, there is a great quote by David Allen who said that you can do everything. No, it's the other way around. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. Thank you so much for watching this video and I would be really curious to know what has been the most useful for you, so let me know down below in the comments. Please don't forget to hit that like button, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye!